Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, it's Alex and it's the Ramble. Yes, and we go until midnight tonight here on the east coast of the United States from New York City. New York, New York, the city's so nice they named it twice, okay? Uh, let me see here, we gotta go to... Uh, let me see. Are we there? Okay, I think we're uh, we're ready to go here with our our guests that we usually have on uh, on mo- on on Tuesday. Uh, let me see here. Let me get rid of this. There we go. Hey, every now and then you'll see me in, put turn stuff off up up on the screen here, which is ridiculous. Anyway, uh, hello. It's hey, Bill. I it's- got my heart into this one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell them what happened. I was worried about you. Well, you know, you know uh, I'm very fortunate. I, I, I got so many people just like you who wrote me and called and they were worried. Mm-hmm. I, you know, maybe they thought I, they were in my will. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, I, I'm very blessed to, to have all the people that were concerned. And I, that included many, many of them from the ramble and Mm -hmm. uh, i want to thank them for uh for that concern yeah Yeah. uh you know a couple weeks ago uh i wasn't feeling that well Mm -hmm. so i thought that and i i was getting short of breath doing uh when i would exert myself so uh, i figured all right well maybe i've got another heart thing going on so uh i went in for a treadmill Treadmill said, yeah, something's not right. So then they decided. So then they another- said, go get a Peloton. Yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> I, I need something to hang uh, laundry on. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I had, I've had some of those things. Yeah. Uh, and, well, anyway, uh, it, it said there was an anomaly. So then they set up another uh, a treadmill uh, with contrast, but that wasn't for another couple of weeks. Well, I, I wasn't feeling well, and this was shortly after I had the second uh, mm-hmm. COVID shot. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, my my dexterity, I, I woke up in the morning. I, I couldn't hold anything. Well, I would well, drop well, stuff. Some people are having that effect. Yeah, and, and I had some shot. memory issues. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I, I actually, either my biorhythms were really off mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, I was having memory issues, definite memory issues then uh i didn't want to talk to anybody because i I couldn't remember what i was saying Mm -hmm. so i i left work early i just closed i was there alone and i I closed the store about two hours early i went to the er and uh they did some tests on me they said no you didn't have a heart attack you didn't have a stroke um uh we'll we'll do the test we'll do the contrast Mm -hmm. test so they moved it up a week uh but they kept me there overnight so uh, in ICU. So at that point, they did the test and they said, yeah, the test is showing something. So uh, they, they set up an EK, uh, not any, uh, they set up an an, um, angioplasty for me. Mm-hmm. The guy uh, on Friday, they did the angioplasty. I got in there at six in the morning and uh, they had me on the table in about an hour and a half. Very efficient. And uh, they stick a wire in, in, in an artery yeah. and they run it up to your heart. Right. It's got a, a camera on it and they stick some dye in there. Mm-hmm. And the guy says, hey, you know, there's no change since the last time you had an angioplasty. Uh, everything's open. Everything's fine. And uh, your stents are doing well. <laughs> so, you know, I was happy to, hear, you know, talk to my stents. Yeah. But, so I was home by two in the afternoon. Yeah, I just don't. Don't you feel though that you you kind of what can I say? How can I put it? Um, you you kind of feel like your time has been wasted because it came to nothing. No, you know, uh, you know I checked out what I thought it was. You know, you you know if you don't check it out, then uh, you're always wondering yeah, yeah. If, if something's wrong. Yeah. So uh, I checked it out. It's fine. 
Uh, I made some commitments that I didn't want to lay on that table anymore. So I would improve my diet and maybe start. Oh, exercising. yeah, sure. Sure. You know? <laughs> sure. Sure. I went for a walk sure. yesterday. Oh, good. I can't yeah. walk anymore. You can't? Walk? I can walk, but my bottom of my feet hurt a lot. Yeah. And it's from the, it's not from the, it's not from the neuropathy. I think it has to do with uh, uh, plantar fasciitis or whatever. And I went to walk down to the store today. I come back. I haven't, I haven't walked in so long that I'm exhausted after I walk two blocks, you know? <laughs> I guess it's a perishable thing because, you know, mm -hmm. you have to build, build back up to it. So, yeah. uh, you know, people are saying that, yes, I had the COVID shot a couple of days or three yeah. days or so yeah. before uh, the last one before uh, this episode. Mm -hmm. And then I read somewhere that other people are having those same reactions to the, uh, to the second COVID shot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I I feel Marjorie, great. Now. Marjorie Marjorie felt um, uh, uh, she was all achy and everything, and she didn't feel well the next day. I was yeah. okay. I've been. What I heard today was that women have a harder time with the second shot than men do. Yeah. Okay. So she was feeling all those things. I yeah. I felt a little achy in both arms and. You know, I felt the normal ache in the arm from the shot, you know, but otherwise I didn't, uh, it, it was fine, you know. That's that's all I had from the second shot was the normal little ache in the arm. Right. But, uh, and it was several days later that I I had these complications. It can, so can happen. Really it can sure happen. It can happen. That they're COVID shot related. Well. But talking about COVID, I have an, a friend and an employee that last night his mother died in a uh, an assisted living facility. Mm -hmm. uh, there, the mother was in the in the facility. Yeah. she's in the nineties. Uh, she, um, uh, the owner of the facility, would never wear a mask, and she has another facility a few blocks away where uh, one of the uh, tenants or clients or whatever they call them uh, was COVID positive. So she went from that facility, having contact with them, mm -hmm. to his mother's facility. Mm -hmm. His mother ends up getting COVID. Now, she hasn't had anybody from the outside world visit her. My friend had a, had a look at her and talk to her through a sliding glass door. Mm -hmm. And uh, so last night, she passed away. Oh, boy. You know, and she passed away alone. Uh, th yeah, this, but you know... The stupidity is the owner of this place not wearing a mask. Of course. And of I course. think your friend should sue the facility. Uh, yeah, but what good does that do? Saying that you were not going, you were not, if even for yourself personally, engaging in the protocols that have been directed by the CDC, especially for a nursing home. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's well, insane. I mean, probably she got it from the guy who owned the nursing home, or if she didn't get I it from know. him, somebody else got it. Maybe they were maybe not, uh, what can we call it, uh, you know, not uh, active, but well, still they could the, spread it. The wife of the guy that owns the nursing home. And uh, she she was a non-mask wearer. Oh, wow. Oh, well, although the CDC has now said that just about everybody on your panel, including you and I, mm -hmm. uh, can uh, can meet without a mask. We can all hang out. Yeah, because we've had uh, two uh, two vaccines. Right. Exactly. Okay. So we're we're, we're yeah we're we're cool. We're safe. We're uh, safe. You know, according to the CDC. Well, well, I mean, we could we you could for instance technically you could come over and have dinner. Okay, and we could sit around and talk and not have to wear masks. That's yeah. really what they're saying. They say don't go into any large groups yet. You know. Yeah. I, I probably told you that, uh, but I hadn't had the results yet. Mm -hmm. Last uh, Monday, prior to the uh, operation, uh, I had a COVID test, and I was negative. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, I'm feeling pretty good, and you know uh, that uh, here I've been working all of this time. I you know I've been wearing a mask, but working with public, yeah. and I you know I've been concerned you, that yeah. you, I'm risking yeah. my health. For the for my business. Well, you're yeah. not risking your health though. You've got you've had the second shot. You are how many weeks since the second shot? 
Uh, it's over th- over two. Okay, uh, so you are protected. you are now ninety five percent protected, and the other five percent that you're not protected. If you did come down with it, yes, but from March sixteenth to the present, mm-hmm. I've been working, and uh, that yeah, doesn't even matter. I'm, I'm saying that at this point, if you come down with it, the right. worst that's going to happen if the five percent plays out and you get it. The worst that's going to happen is you're going to be, you know, you probably aren't, you aren't going to have to be hospitalized, and you're not going to die of it. Okay, well, nobody, nobody who has gone through the second shot in the entire it. country has died from it. Okay. Well, let me ask you this: What is the 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 things that they call when uh, they have drugs that help you? And they don't cure or they don't stop the uh, the virus, but it, it, it helps you um, uh, with uh, the symptoms. There, there's a uh, word. There's a, uh, there's a new, there's one drug you're talking about that's right. out it, now. It, it's that, yeah, that they say that if you come it. down with it, if you come down with it and they give it to you, it will mitigate the circumstances. Right. Yeah, it, it's something chloroquine, but it's not the first no, one. No, it's not chloroquine. Uh-huh. That one was... No, no, no. But there's another. There's another one. It starts yeah, with yeah, M. Yeah, yeah, and they, they. It's been around for quite a while, and it was used for other stuff. But they found that now, if somebody comes down with COVID, they immediately give it to him, and he won't get full right. blown COVID. Yeah, okay. and 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 whatever that is, that word is, that it's for that kind of drug. Yeah, that yeah. mitigates the uh, yeah. the issue. Yeah. So I mean, that's better. It's much better. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, uh, Cuomo seems to be in the news. Uh, his book, they've, uh, no, did they you stop? Know, it t- now, it? let's let's correct you for a second. Today yeah. was the first day he wasn't in the news. <laughs> <laughs> Why, did they hang him? <laughs> probably, I don't know, but they probably, took, they probably took a big sigh of relief on that one. Today, yeah. for some reason, they were too busy with all this other stuff, you know, and he just yeah. didn't come up in the news, but uh, God, they've been gang banging him, haven't they? Well, there's another. They, they, I guess today there was another shiny object. I don't know what it what it was. It might have been Musk's uh, rocket blowing up, or uh, or having some sort of issue on landing his, yeah. his experimental rocket. But uh, the Democrats in New York have taken Cuomo's uh, emergency powers away from him. Mm-hmm. Uh, crown uh, is a crown that's not crown books uh, it was um wh- whatever his publisher was uh said that they were going to stop promoting his book and that they weren't going to print any more uh, uh copies mm-hmm. uh so uh you know that that's are they going to ask for his emmy back well he, he, <laughs> that's right <laughs> here's here's my here's a point i've got to make here though yeah nothing's been proven you know, this is all he said, she said, this is going... First, the sex things are all in you. Well, I didn't They're that. all, you know, somebody saying something happened. But nobody's gone to court. Nobody's had to swear under oath. Nobody's had to take a lie detector. Okay? Yeah, I didn't no. mention the sex things. Okay, uh, now, the, now the, nursing home thing, the nursing home <laughs> thing uh, yeah. is a serious accusation. But it basically is is an accusation. I mean, he they have somewhat admitted that they had fudged with the numbers because they didn't want to get in trouble. With, they didn't want the government to get on their case. Okay? It was his top assistant that outed him. Yeah, yeah. And she's still there, by the way. She's. It's not like she suddenly disappeared. I, I don't think they can fire whistleblowers. Can DeRosa they? is her name. I'm trying to remember yeah. her first name now. And he's she's been with him for a long time. Very smart woman. She always she speaks at the the, the press conferences. Uh, and basically, uh, I think that it's really a question of of what went on back then. Uh, the claim that they're making is that the hospitals have did not consider these deaths uh, nursing home deaths. They considered them hospital deaths because they sent them to the hospital and they died there. Okay? That's part of it. But the other part is where he said he was going to send the people, COVID positive people from the hospitals back into the nursing home. Because, homes. because, why, Phil? Because he didn't want to use the Javits no, Center no, or the no, ship. No, 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 no. Because that's what the CDC said to do. That was their guidance. Uh, their guidance you know, was, their guidance was, okay, 
that if a person is in a nursing home and they send them to the hospital and they start getting better and they are better, okay, you can send them back to the nursing home rather than keep them in the hospital where they have a bigger chance of getting a lot of other infections, also staying in the hospital where they're taking up a hospital bed. And at that time, you may remember they were at a premium. So it was the suggestion of the CDC that you send them back to the nursing home. Cuomo has said if any of those nursing homes says, said, we don't want them, he said, we would have found other places for them to be. I, I remember Cuomo being very adamant and saying, you know what, you have to take them. No, uh, no, 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 no. And, and I had said something about it several months. No, uh, he didn't. But, he didn't say that. He said, you, you, you should take them back. You have, you, according to the CDC, you should take them back. But if you don't want them back, we will find other places to put them on. One of these days when I'm not so lazy, I should go back to those uh, well, earlier shows. I'm, you know, you look, you don't have to. Def I, I, I'm, I'm tired of defending Cuomo because, quite frankly, yeah. I think he's, he's, he's handled, up. he's handled well, a lot. I got to say this. I got to say this about Cuomo. He has great taste in the women that he hits on. We, we certainly better than the other people who are being <laughs> accused of this yeah. sort of thing. A Blasi Ford, no. no. Yeah, Kavanaugh yeah. had no taste. Yeah. Cuomo, Cuomo, on the other hand, yeah. he has taste. Now, uh, I think it's terrible if what well, they're I, 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 there were three of them, and I, I looked at the TV set and said to girlfriend, um, let's see, uh, uh, marry, fuck, kill. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I understand. But you know, I the the ones I've seen pictures of, they were they were good looking women. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I mean, I I just uh, you know, I mean, to begin with, to strip him of the powers of, uh, I don't know if they, have they stripped him of the powers. Yes, uh, I, I read they stripped him of his emergency powers. Well, oh, uh, De Dextra. Uh, Alan wrote me. He says it's Dextra Methasome. Methasone? Okay, something like that. Anyway, the point is, let me get let's, let's get back to this a second. That's generic for hydrochloric. Yeah. No, it's not generic for hydrochloric. <laughs> uh, but here's the thing about uh, uh, about what went on um, w with them taking away his emergency powers. It yeah. takes away from him the very powers he had that saved my life and the life of a lot of New Yorkers, and I think it was stupid of them to take it away. I think that what if I were Cuomo, what I would do is I would say, there's an election coming up next year. I'm not going to run. So why, don't, why isn't everybody settled down and let me do my job and finish off the last year of my time? I in thought office? he wanted to run. He wanted a fourth. No, term. I'm saying that he should say, I'm tired of this. I'm not going to run for a fourth term. OK, well, like I was planning committing. on doing. Then he's admitting that he was wrong. No, he's not admitting that he was wrong. He can just say, I'm sick and tired of this. I think I've done a good job. I've tried to do a good job. You're stripping me of the powers that allows me to do a good job. Uh, so I'm just not going to run for office again. I'm, I'm sick of this. I don't need this sort of thing. He could yeah. use that as his excuse and on he goes, you know. Well, you know, people have short memories. If he, if he rides it out, there may be a chance in New York... They would they I think Cuomo has a dynasty there. They they'd elect them again. Uh, from what I've heard is that the even though people weren't happy with this, uh, these new revelations, they would still vote for him. I think I would. Uh, I'm a, yeah, I would probably vote for him. Yeah, I, I can I can say that I I just feel that uh, because I feel I do feel, Phil, and I have to say this honestly, the man saved my life. You know, uh, and and you don't think that listening to uh, the CDC uh, about uh, mask wearing look, saved look, your life too? Will you agree with me that in the very beginning we didn't know shit? No. Okay, and everything was speculation, and so you had to rely on somebody. And if you were a governor, who would you rely on? You rely on the CDC and their 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 judgment. Uh, unfortunately, and I don't want to get into an argument with you, but the CDC was somewhat under the control of Donald Trump, and the message was being so. the message was being parsed. Okay. Anyway, the point I'm making is, is that all he knew is what the CDC told him. He had to learn, right, as he went along on this. It was kind of earn while you learn, you know. 
So he had to learn while he was going along. And uh, it was... It was a learning curve, and it was a horrible learning curve because all of a sudden he had this, this onslaught of this disease in the state, and there was precious little he could do about it. The you know? world, the whole world, Italy, Spain, yeah. France, yeah. Germany, they, they were learning as, as they went too. But, you know, but, Pelosi but, oh, and, minute, but, and— But he turned that curve around, you know, by his yeah. messaging, by his messaging— and by his, the things he did, the kind of executive orders that he made and so on, and by closing down all the restaurants and everything, and, and suddenly uh, 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 having this thing uh, under, a little more under control. And I think I, by when, doing when, that, he saved my life. When Pelosi said that I should go to Chinatown and I should oh, shop. Forget about Pelosi. Pelosi. Wait a minute, wait come a on, minute. Come on, come on, forget I, Pelosi. I, I, I would have gone. But I couldn't find a parking space. I see. Okay. Anyway, the point I'm making here is that you know that at the time we were working, uh, uh, we were working on fumes. We didn't know what this was, how dangerous it was. All of a sudden, every hospital was filled up, every bed was filled up. We were out of PPE. I mean, it was a it was a disastrous situation. Right. Something he couldn't have seen coming. Uh, I, nobody could have seen it coming. Um, uh, certainly it would have been good had, um, had our former president closed down Europe as well as China, but he had this hard on for China and didn't realize that the thing could easily come from Europe. Uh, it took a week and who would have expected China to, uh, to allow, uh, infected people to fly to Europe? You know, I mean, you know, that that's unconscionable. Well, I mean, uh, infected people probably flew to Europe before they ever know they were, knew there was a real problem. They locked down Wuhan right away. They said nobody can fly in Wuhan to other areas of China, but they allowed anyone to fly from China. No, they didn't. To Europe, no, no, uh, China, but China. You got to remember, Beijing didn't have a single case. Yeah. Well, so if you flew somebody I, from Beijing, it would seem to make money. Yes, there it is. There's I, a, I'm ready. There's a hundred uh, won. You know. That's that's equivalent, by the way, of twenty dollars. It is. A mm -hmm. hundred. 100 won is, is about $20. I don't know what the current exchange rates are, but when I went there, it was a hundred. It was a $20. Wow, I thought it was about $0.08. Cents. Well, you <laughs> always figure out what a bill like that is worth so you can you know, figure out if you're buying something, how much you're paying for it. Yeah. 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 Well, I've never been to China, so... Uh... Like this hat was like a 50 won. Wow. Yeah. So I, I got two hats. Got two hats, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, all I'm saying is, is that uh, we were working on fumes at the time. We didn't know what was going on, yeah. you know, and neither did he. And I think he did a, a really great job of administering well, the whole situation. You know, he gave hope to a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, in New York mm -hmm. at a time when they needed it. Yeah. And that you can't discount. Right. Uh, the fact that he's a bully and and a braggart and uh, a, a number look, of other I'll, things. I'll, I'll give you all of that. I've heard all those things about him. That he's he's a terrible person to work for, uh, you know. But then again, Donald Trump was a terrible person to work for too, you know. Uh, well, so, only the people he fired say that. Well, no, they, the people who worked for him in the early days said he was terrible. Yeah, you know. I mean, he was not a good boss. Some people just don't know how to treat their people. But you know. Uh, and so far as this stuff about he did this with women, he did that with women, I, you know, come on, let's t take a lie detector test, swear <laughs> under oath, then I'll, I'll listen to you. Okay. Years ago, uh, it was, it was a different time and you, and you couldn't, uh, and it was common to have, uh, office romances, but in today's world, having an office romance is so taboo, even prior to what. Uh, Cuomo had done. I mean, you, you, no matter how much you wanted to w ask someone out that worked for you, mm -hmm. you, you couldn't do it. Well, you can't do it now. I mean, look, be sympathetic for a moment towards towards Cuomo. Single guy, right? right? Um, obviously wants to date people, wants to have some kind of a relationship, and starts doing small talk that might just be kind of testing the waters to see if the person might be interested. Yeah, but uh, many of these people work for him 
or uh, hey, hey, that's a that's a big mistake. You never do. You never uh, uh, you never put your pen. Don't in, dip your pen, pen in, in the, the company, company ink. ink. Right. Right. You know, <laughs> uh, and I made that a, a, a really important factor in my job when I whenever I would have a job. I never had. I had a lo- the probably the most gorgeous producer in San Francisco by the name of Christie. Just gorgeous. I never sexy, knew her. Hot. Every guy that would walk in would start salivating. Never once did I ever hit on her because yeah. I valued her more as a producer than I would have at maybe some momentary fling that I might have. Well, the closest have. thing I knew to one of your producers was Joe Rigelski. Well, I wouldn't. I would have <laughs> never fucked him. But uh, and you wouldn't. Have, yeah, well, yeah, he wasn't the yeah, producer. He was yeah. the news guy. And I had I had a newswoman, Lori Thompson. We in fact slept in the same bed in Spain, and we never touched each other because. I, I valued what she was to the show, and I realized that if we had any kind of a relationship that way, sure, it, it, would, change. it, it would change the whole nature of the relationship. Yeah. But it would change but the dynamic. It, apparently, that was lost on Cuomo, you know? Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I understand why the guy was, say, chatting them up. I think that's the best way to describe it. You, you had know? groupies when you were... Oh, well, those, I, those they were fair game. Oh, yeah. yeah. But Cuomo had to have groupies. Now, some of them might have been 90, mm-hmm. but, you know, he, 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 you know, you're the governor, you're single. You don't think he got groupies? Well, you, you know, you become a little suspicious of that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, you're not as, as uh, you know. Anyway, listen, we got a bunch of people who probably want to start talking cool. here. And hey, uh, I, again, I just, I have to say, give a shout out to the people on GabNet. Uh, they reached out when they knew that I was uh, having this procedure, yeah. and they were so kind and so nice, and I, I really thank them. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I, you know, I, uh, you know, of course, I always. And worry you too. About you. Yeah, well, of course, <laughs> I worry about you. You know, you were. You're, I'm always thinking about you and your health because you've had several health problems in the last yeah. couple of years. You know, see if I can reverse a few. Me, I just sit here taking this pill every night, and it just makes me woozy for the rest of the day. But, man, is it a great pill. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, it's always good to talk to you, my friend, you know. Uh, I'm here. And, Thank and, you for and, thinking of me. And we'll uh, we'll see you again next week, okay? You bet. Thanks. Ladies and Take gentlemen, care. that's Phil Meyer. Bye-bye, Bye. Phil. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen. There goes Phil Meyer. Uh, and uh, he is, uh, he, we, we love having him on the show. Okay, now it's time for us to go to our citizen panel. These are the people who call the program, and we're admitting the ones that are there, and we'll probably more will call us in just a little bit, but uh, let's, uh, let's go over and, and say hello to them. Uh, let's see here. Who have we got? Oh, where, where's, where's Charlie Wallace? Oh, he's still attempting to join. He hasn't joined yet. Uh, there's uh, there's tr- trucker Steve. He's in his truck again, which means he's going somewhere. Where are you, tr- Steve? I'm in Toronto. In Toronto. Okay. Uh, leaving. Where? What? Tomorrow morning. Are you leaving tomorrow Sparks morning? Tonight. Okay. All right. And uh, let's see here. Alan, you're at home. And Brian Neary is at home. And Charlie Wallace is at home. And Jeff Stein, you don't have your mic on, but uh, you're... You're home. There we go. There you go, Jeffrey. See? He's, there just, he's just fine, and there's no audio coming back at him, and he's doing terrific. Well, hello, folks. How are you? Doing. Okay. Yeah, anything uh, Anything to report? Anything new? Anything that you uh, thought about? You know, just waiting to see if anybody else is going to call tonight. I'm I'm getting a little I'm getting a little frustrated with all of this, you know. Uh, some nights, well, like my second shot will be two weeks tomorrow. Oh really? Oh okay. So yeah, you, my second is tomorrow. Yeah, so you could come see us. Actually, is what you could do. Who? What yeah, happened to? Uh, okay, Jeff. Jeff had a problem there. Let's go to Jeff. Let's get him on there. Oh, there we go. I don't know. What happened to you, Jeff? Oh, turn on your mic, Jeff. <laughs> there, there we go. What happened? I'm hearing two people at the same time. Oh, oh, you've got, oh, you've got your, uh, you've got, you've got your uh, browser on. Get rid of your browser. 
Don't get rid of Zoom. Just get rid of the browser or turn oh, it off yeah. or, you know, whatever. <clears throat> By the way, everybody, in case you don't know this, you can always go up to the, if you're using like a Chrome browser, you can always go up to the browser and say to it, uh, I want to uh, mute this particular tab on my browser <laughs> and, it, and it mutes it, you know. So. Just letting people know how it works. Anyway, um, God, I'm I'm a little tired tonight. I did uh, I did my pill last night. I'm going to do it again tonight. And I'm always it always makes me a little. Oh, you see, you got the dog with you. You got Rocky with there you. Is. There he is. I see his tail. I see his little head peeking up there. Okay, all right, mm -hmm. that's good. Mm. So anyway, oh. uh, did anybody see my posting that I had up about Pepe Le Pew? Yep. Oh, yeah. Is here they're going after uh, Miss Piggy now? No. No way. God. Yeah. What's next? They're going after the Swedish chef? Yeah. <laughs> Does it yeah, make it fun of the Swedish people? I don't, I don't understand this. You know, I mean, I'm sorry. Pepe Le Pew was one of my favorite cartoon characters of all time. And I loved him because he was committing so many rapes. I couldn't believe it. It was wonderful. No. Um, it, the fact was that Pepe Le Pew was simply an amorous cartoon character. He was a skunk. Who, it's not and amorous. He, 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 is, he believed in love. He didn't try to rape anybody. And they say, well, it, you, you still got your sound up, Jeff. I don't know. I, uh, yeah. Jeff, do you have a browser there? No, I can't get it to work. I'm going to shut it down and then come back. Oh, no, but you, obviously you're, you're, you have a problem because you're watching our YouTube, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, well, get rid of the YouTube. Yeah. Get yeah, rid of YouTube. YouTube down. I'll be right over, Jeff, and help you out. <laughs> yeah, if you just... It can't, it, it, it. There you go. Oh, well, we lost him completely. Wasn't, wasn't Pepe Le Pew a skunk? Pepe Le Pew was a skunk, and he was an yeah. amorous skunk who, there was always a cat involved. But he was chasing a cat. It was a cat, and the cat would, like, accidentally, like, go under a ladder that had just been painted and get a stripe down its back. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, Pepe Le Pew would fall madly in love with the cat. And he would hug you, and I love you, and I, you know, and he would just be, be yeah. very romantic and, you know, bring them flowers and do things like that. And they say, well, it perpetuated a rape concept. What? Is oh. What? And you know who did this? Oh. Certainly a Warners. Warner Brothers. And oh, today, I, I, you know, I, I sometimes go on, on HBO Max and I go to the cartoons and go through some of them because they're some of my favorites. And I remember at least a couple of weeks ago, Pepe Le Pew cartoons were there. And today, they're gone. Jeez. Okay? Uh, hey, what, what, what cartoon can they not... What, what cartoon would they say they're safe? I mean, Yosemite Sam, uh, the Redneck's going to get mad. And, you know, I mean, just, just go down the line of every single cartoon character has some kind of stereotype. That was their character. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, uh, how about how about the how about the violence inherent in the coyote and the roadrunner? Yeah, you know. But these are cartoons. And secondly, these cartoons were not made for kids. These cartoons were made for an adult audience. And the reason they were, let me explain it, is that the features that they came with were all you know your Humphrey Bogart movies and whatever the mm -hmm. current uh, main film was that the uh, Warner Brothers was was uh, sending around, and they would buy a cartoon and they would buy a short subject and buy sometimes they buy what they call a companion feature, and these cartoons were made for a more general audience, adults to begin with, and uh, it it really was. Um, uh, to me, the, uh, I love the Pepe Le Pew cartoons. I thought they were hilarious. I mean, I I love the one where he uh, a a Black Panther uh, gets a stripe down his back from paint. 
right, and escapes from the zoo and gets a stripe down his back from the zoo, uh, at the zoo, and he thinks, of course, it's a, it's a big lady skunk. And every time he goes to make love to this black panther, it tears, the, it tears him to shreds, <laughs> right? But he keeps going back for more, and finally he's, like, completely, completely just massacred in the last uh, segment of this thing and just torn to shreds. And you know, then he goes, you know, I think I'm getting to like this. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, I, uh, to me, those were hilarious cartoons. And it made no sense to me when I read uh, yesterday that Warner Brothers, to begin with, they had a new Space Jam movie coming out, which is... Uh, probably a bigger uh, assault on the senses than any Pepe Le Pew cartoon. Uh, but they did another Space Jam movie, and they had Pepe Le Pew in it, and they excised him from the film. And then I went to look to see if they had still had them on the Warner Brothers cartoon section on uh, HBO Max, and he wasn't there anymore. Yes, Charlie. <laughs> yes, Charlie. You had your hand up. I don't understand how sexual assault is funny. Pepe Le Pew was forcing himself on another being without her consent. <laughs> That's not funny to me. That's never been funny but to me. But all he was doing was forcing his, shall we say, romantic intentions on them. Now, he wasn't like raping them. He wasn't like forcing them anything. He just went, I want to love you. I love you so much. He you know? chased them? All over the place, he grabbed them against their will. He tried to kiss them. Are you serious, I'm, Charlie? I'm sorry, if you did that to a woman, you'd be in prison. Charlie, it's a fucking cartoon. <laughs> so why is it okay for a cartoon? That's still because, it's a, because it's a cartoon. Oh, a cat. <laughs> I mean, did I anybody... Think bald, huh? I think bald, Okay, fat, so it's okay for cartoons to be it, racist. Watch then. it, Brian. The Simpsons, I'm going to start protesting because I'm losing my hair, I'm gaining weight, and the Simpsons, they make a lot of fun of his weight and how stupid he is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but no. you're not fat, Brian. I'm I just don't, I, I, Charlie, I have to disagree with you. I mean, I don't think I would, maybe you're looking at a different cartoon than I did, but all he ever did was just caress them and I want to make love to you and I want to just bring some flowers and he, you know, oh, and of course he's always mistaken. okay with some woman... But it wasn't a business know, uh, like yeah. chasing after you and grabbing you and trying to kiss you over and over again, despite how many. But that's a you, that's a human being, be not okay. a fucking cartoon <laughs> skunk. It's still, it's still <laughs> I mean, my, da I'm my daughter kid. watches Paw Patrol, Blaze, Peppa Pig. She doesn't know about Pepe Le Pew or any of the older cartoons. Right. They're all on the new stuff. All the marketing is all for the new stuff. So yeah. it wouldn't make a difference to me at all. Right. And I'm, I'm an adult. He's Leaves. not a major Warner Brothers character. He, he, he wasn't a major character, but he certainly yeah. was well in the stable, you know. And I always thought they were incredibly funny cartoons, you know. I did, too. Ridiculously right. funny. What? Yeah. Like ridiculously I, I funny. Ridiculously funny. I did, I did too, but, I you know, I'm not going to... I understand why it's not, you know, I'm not, I'm not having a big thing about Pepe Le Pew. He's not a major enough character to, you know, if they want to ban Bugs Bunny, then, you know, then we'll, we'll talk. But Pepe Le Pew was a pretty minor character. And, and uh, I, I said my piece about cancel culture before, I think. Yeah, James, James Bond. It's James just Bond the generation himself, gap is all it is. James Bond put himself over a bunch of women too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. usually they wanted it. Well, so, well, yeah. Well, 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 also James Bond movies have changed over the years too. I mean, he's not slapping women in the ass anymore like he did in whatever that was with the. Uh, you know, I Sean Connery. Yeah, he in the first picture he slaps some woman in the ass. Yeah. 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 Right. 
It's different now. I mean, you know, James Bond is James Bond. But I think he slapped Money Penny on the ass. That's who he slapped. The that woman. might have been. I yeah. don't remember, yeah. but I just remember seeing a clip. I don't know what movie that was. Well, I mean, look, things were done because of the times they were done in. Yeah. Uh, and and um, you can't turn around and and I don't know uh, and and rewrite culture. No, we're not. No, but nobody's rewriting culture. Well, yes, they nobody's, are. Yes, they no. are. They are eliminating. They are eliminating. Like, Got to remember something. Cartoon, these I cartoons were masterfully made. They are some of the best cartoons ever created. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, the artist's work went into these things, and now they're being obliterated because somebody suddenly decided that, oh, well, you know, he was the rape skunk. Well, Birth of, a, Birth of a Nation was a great piece of filmmaking too, but <laughs> no, there you got to, you know, I think there that you doesn't mean I have to like it. Yeah, no, th there you have an entirely different set of circumstances. No, I don't think so. I mean, it's not as severe. I mean, it's a it's difference different between degree. a bunch of people riding on horses dressed as the Ku Klux Klan and a romantic skunk <laughs> that's I'm not animated. It's exactly the same, but. But the times are way different now. Than and then. by the way, the I wouldn't want—I wouldn't want to change a hair on Birth of the Nation's head, because number one, it represents a certain mentality that was existent at the time. Right. The picture was made by a Southerner who thought yeah. this was okay—that the Ku Klux Klan yeah. were heroes where he was raised. Yeah, and yeah. And, and, and if I if I if I felt like <clears throat> it, I could. And I want to be able to go back. Wait, okay, calm down, Dan. Right calm down, yeah. Dan. Calm down. Calm down. Mm -hmm. uh, what I was going to say is that, that you know that I think Birth of a Nation. Uh, we all know it's bad. We all know why it is bad. In <laughs> fact, even even uh, what's his name who made the film. Um, uh, God, my mind's a blank. E.W. Griffith. E. Griffith, who made yeah. the film. Uh, his second film was a film called Intolerance, which he made in order to kind of do a mea copa for what he had done with Birth of a Nation. Okay. okay. Well, so, I've never heard of that one. So. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's, yeah. it's another great movie. I'm sure it is, yeah. Did you ever see that scene of going into Babylon, this big giant set they built in LA and oh, gorgeous film. But anyway, um it was all about intolerance through the ages. Mm -hmm. And and uh so he saw the error of his ways, but the fact was that this film was the first time that movies were ever taken seriously. Okay. Right. No matter yeah, what. Yeah, it was the first like blockbuster in a way, right? Yeah, sort. it was a blockbuster. Yeah. yeah. Alan? I'm going to change the subject because I don't even know who the hell you guys are talking about. <laughs> 15 minutes on a cartoon character? I, I think it's important. Oh, well, okay. We'll go back to Can I? Oh. So I have a friend of I mine. I mean, cancel that... culture, the, the basic thing, cancel culture is a big deal because it's going on like. You know. you know what I hate most about cancel culture? The word cancel culture. Same here. Absolutely. You, you know, I think it's just Sucks. used too much. Yes, yeah. uh, Vernon. Did you guys hear uh, Tim Ryan's rant today about the Republicans complaining? Yeah, he had a fit. Okay, hold, hold it down, Dan. You kind of, to begin with, your mic's very loud. Okay. And, I'll, and, I'll, and, and well, and, what, I, what I found interesting. I'll turn it down. What I found interesting is that there are people who say that they're formerly Republicans and they are still, uh, they are still putting forth this myth that Republicans make up half the voters in this country. They don't, they make up 35 to 40% no. and that's all. But yet they, they, whenever they don't have their way, now they're victims, they're victims of cancel culture. Or mm. if you don't go along with them, then you're not letting the minority get their voice, you know? Are they saying that's being a victim of cancel culture? Yes. I no, thought no, when no, people no. were trying to ban something, that was a vic being a victim of cancel culture. Yeah, but they're no. the ones that are bitching about it. They're acting like they're the ones being canceled. The only one that got canceled was Trump because he lost the fucking election. Yeah. And he got banned from Twitter because he's an asshole. 
Well, the Democrats are trying to get stuff done, and the Republicans are talking on about Dr. Seuss, Dr. Seuss, Dr. Seuss. Yeah. That's what Tim Ryan was ranting yeah, about. Right. He said there's important Dr. things Seuss to be was doing. Told by Dr. Seuss's people. Yeah. Right. That was not anybody calling for Dr. Seuss's books. To I, be was canceled. it pulled by his people or by his yes. publisher or by his publisher? By his, by his publisher, people, yeah. his estate. Yes. They decided not to print those books anymore because they had racist overtones to them. That was yeah. their decision. Right. There okay. was no Democrats oh. that got up and demanded it. Mm. Okay. I know, but that's uh, the Republicans want you to think that. They want you to think the liberals are trying to cancel yeah. Dr. Seuss. Yeah. But, yes, Vernon. Well, then, then Joe Manchin has the balls to get up there and say, well, I, I don't want to vote against, uh, I don't want to do away with the filibuster because then the minority is not, their voice is not going to be heard. Mm. Well, Republicans have been using the filibuster as majority rule for the last 30 to 40 years. Yeah. And, and the filibuster was created to protect slavery. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get rid of the filibuster. Yeah. Okay, but but on the other hand, on the other hand, uh, it seems as though Joe Biden doesn't want to get rid of the filibuster. He's he's a creature of the Senate. He's a so creature of the he's Senate. He's kind of captured. Yeah. He's kind of captured into that same thing that Joe Manchin was talking about. But they don't understand the reality of what's going on right now, and that is the Republicans are remaining in control by using the filibuster to block anything. Yeah, but and when did the Democrats ever use the filibuster to block anything? That's true. I don't know. That I can't name a time Probably when they have. the Republicans use it. They exactly. um, and they use it constantly. They don't have to they get use, rid yeah. of it. They don't have to completely get rid of it. Just make it harder so that the people and, if you're going to filibuster, you can't just fucking leave. Yeah, you have to, be there you have to and, stand there and talk and talk. Dan, and Dan I'm going to have to ask you to kind of hold it down a little bit. I'm, I know you're okay. enthusiastic. I know you're enthusiastic, but it kind of inhibits other people as well from talking. Okay, it's it's not a matter of turning down your audio all the way so we can't hear you. It's just a matter of just wait for your best shot. You know. Okay. Um, where are we? Oh. So you know, they're uh, doing the Jimmy Stewart style of filibuster where they got to stay there. Go back to the old fashioned filibuster where they got to work at it, is what oh, you're yeah. saying. Yes, Alan. Yes. So, yeah, Dan had cut me off, but thank you for coming on the show, Vernon. You changed the subject. <laughs> what? You didn't I like the I think the Pepe Le Pew <laughs> discussion is, a, is an important discussion. Because it's just, it's just another straw that's breaking the camel's back on this whole thing. Everybody's again, yawning. Nobody Alex. got up and demanded that. That was Warner Brothers' decision yeah. to make it. I know, and I think it's wrong. Nobody demanded Pepe Le Pew be pulled. Right. They were just... I didn't even demand it. I just listen, it. I listen, like listen. It. Pepe Le Pew, Le Pew has been around <laughs> since the at least the 40s. L- the 40s okay. Wow. You, I mean, now you have now your mic's too low, Dan. Oh. No, no, it's not. No, don't say no, that. no, it's no, not. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, I can't hear myself, so no. whatever. <laughs> and my friend's saying like Disney Plus stopped a lot of old early '40s cartoons and even like Pe- uh, Peter go. Pan and stuff like that. They, well, did they? Not Peter Pan. Pan what? Warner Brothers cartoons anyway. Well, no, no, no. Disney Plus was doing that. I, yeah, both of them. Yeah. yeah. Why did they take Peter Pan off? I don't know. You don't know? No. Hmm. I, because I, 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 I think I, it's just I, unique. It's not. It's old story. Looks like we lost Alan. Yeah, uh, Alan will be back. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, Doesn't matter. I got the DVD. I can watch it anytime I want. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, uh, I, um, I just, I just feel that it's it it. it this whole thing with being offended by everything. I mean, come on. What happened in the past happened because it took place in a certain period of time in which there was a culture that accepted yeah. that kind of yeah. behavior. I mean, I mean, Gone with the Wind, come on, you know. Well, it's, you know. it's a, well, I never liked Gone with the Wind, to be honest with you. I never thought it was as great a film as everybody else thought it was. 
uh, especially the second half, which is compl- the first half is kind of history. The second half is pure soap opera and bad soap opera at that. But mm. nevertheless, do you know? Do you realize that if it weren't for uh, for Gone with the Wind, there'd be no like TCM mm. or Warner Brothers being o- owning uh, the uh, the uh, the library over at uh, over at MGM because the reason it was bought was because uh, what's his name Ted Turner Ted Turner loved Gone with the Wind and wanted to own it, so he bought the whole MGM library. And that was became the basis for TCM, and it became the first film ever shown on TCM. Now, you can say what you want to about Gone with the Wind. It certainly does, it, it doesn't talk, it doesn't show the horrible side of slavery particularly. Um, but nevertheless, it's, it's history as, to begin with, the most money-making film of all time. In other words, the most admissions sold to any film ever is Gone with the Wind. Uh, and the most pop- so it's considered the most popular movie ever made. Do you suddenly get rid of it because it doesn't fit in with today's sensibilities? No. You it, know. What's getting rid of it? I mean, you know, if you want to see all if you want to see all these things, you can see them. I can go to, right now and see Song of the South on YouTube. Oh yes, and, no, you can't. Yes, I can no, because you, I looked today. Well, you, well, maybe, maybe it's there now, but you can't get you can't buy a good copy of Song of the South well, in this country. Looking at looking at it, looking at the different parts of it, I don't know if I want to anyway. So. Well, let me see Song of the South there, YouTube <clears throat> YouTube Song of the South. Uh, let me well, see here. A little segment about the tar baby. I don't know if that really. So they're, they're, yeah, they're talking that's about. That's really the... current, uh, current for current culture. The tar baby. That uh, yeah. <laughs> they're talking about the depiction of Native Americans. So they did Peter Pan, a Dumbo, mm-hmm. Swiss Family Robinson, and the mm-hmm. Aristocats. Let me see here. Um, Song of the South. The South, um, because uh, well, let me see here, Song of the South, uh, racial discrimination. It's a discussion about it. Zippity doo dah. The song, Song of the South, the full movie is there. Yeah, it, but it's it's illegal. And it's in parts. Oh wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Full movie, it then says Song of the South. The trailer, and then it says, uh, "Who knows? Who knows?" Let me see here. Um, they're singing "Zippity Doo Dah." No, it's not the full film. No, well, it's not the full film. There's no version of the full film on on uh, on YouTube. <clears throat> okay, so sorry. <laughs> oh well, yeah. it's close. Well, that's no, not close. That's- I have a copy of of Song of the Sound. Uh, that I got from a laser disc that was show, uh, sh- uh, that was sold in Japan. Mm-hmm. Okay, but that was the only way you could lay your hands on it. You know, you got a laser disc player? Huh? You uh, have a laser disc not player? Not anymore. Not anymore. Oh. But I did. So you recorded it or something, or transferred uh, it? Uh, I uh, no. I somebody made a copy of it, and I got a copy of it. But you can't buy it. You haven't been able to buy it in this country for years. I will say that what you can do, fortunately or unfortunately, what you can do uh, is you you can see it in some kind of you know uh, version that's been taken from some other source. But it, it it getting an actual good copy of Song of the South, uh, Disney won't sell it. For years, they've talked about reselling it. One of the articles I wrote for Hustler, when I was writing for Hustler, was something about who killed Uncle Remus. And it was about Song of the South. And my feeling that Song of the South was actually a very good anti-racist movie. And if you had a chance to go see it, you'd see what I was talking about. Um... It takes place in the antebellum South. 
uh, the black characters, you could say, are stereotyped, but they were black characters that existed back in that time. And it is all about a young boy whose parents don't understand him, don't get along with each other. He feels alienated from him. And he finds this guy named Uncle Remus who tells him these stories about Br'er Rabbit and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. And, uh, and these are like fables, okay? But at the same time, he takes this boy under his wing and kind of makes him understand what's happening in his personal life with his parents and how to get through it. And he, it's, it's, he's very supportive of this kid, and it's about the love of this kid and Uncle Remus. Mm -hmm. It is not anywhere near a terrible picture. In fact, Disney did something absolutely reprehensible to Disney when he made this film. He went out and hired a leftist Jewish screenwriter to write the screenplay because he wanted it to have that kind of sympathy. So to people not see this film, kids go to Disneyland and they have a ride. I can't remember the, which ride it is, mm -hmm. but there's a ride you take and they sing zippity doo dah on the ride. And there are people playing banjos and stuff or all kind of characters from the, uh, from the movie. But there's no context, and the kids who go to see it don't know what the hell it's about because they never knew these characters ever existed. And it, it, it's pretty sad. It's pretty sad. So, I mean, I often felt that the, it, the Disney not releasing it was timidity on their part and really white judgment on their part because... On top of everything else, and this will this is the true violation in in Disney not showing this film. James Baskett, who played Uncle Remus, mm -hmm. won an Academy Award, a special Academy Award for his role in that picture. And he can't be seen. He can only be seen when the if you go and look at him singing Zippity Doodah, they do have that in some of the Disney stuff. But James Baskett's work, completely obliterated. Completely obliterated. So, you know, I mean, I, I just always had a certain love for that film, even though I don't think it's that great a film. But, you know, Disney tried to do something that was, was relevant. And, and he did it for all the right, right reasons. So, you know, and this was a guy who's pretty much a racist and everything, anti-Semitic. But he hired a Jew to write the goddamn thing. You know, so I made my case for Song of the South. I'm sorry if everybody got bored with that. But uh, I still liked it hmm? when I was a kid. When you were a kid, you liked it. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was great. Me too. Yeah. And everybody refers to the Tar Baby. Well, the Tar Baby isn't, yeah. you know, today, Tar Baby has become a negative term. Back then, it was simply the story where they got the idea of a Tar Baby was from the stories of Uncle Remus and this particular tale that they tell in the picture where Br'er Rabbit, who outwits Br'er Bear and Br'er Fox, uh, creates a black tar baby. And when they go to try and punch it or hit it, they get stuck in it. And that's how he, how he wins over, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's all about the fact that tar sticks. It has nothing to do with, oh, this is what, this is what uh, uh, you know, what uh, black people look like. Have you ever seen the film, Charlie? Yeah. What did you I saw think? When I was a kid. What did you think? I liked it. See? Especially like the songs. Yeah. With Rare Bear and Rare Fox. Um, creates a. Alan. Our baby. Your audio is up. Go to try and punch it or hit it. They get stuck Alan. How he, how he There's an old it. man walking behind him. Our sticks. It has nothing to do with. Alan, can you turn off your audio? Uh, with, uh, black people. Uh, Al, Al. He didn't like what was going on. <laughs> when Alan doesn't like what's going on, he protests. No, there's just one person that every time I raised my hand, started to say something, cut me off. But he's cutting everybody off. <laughs> who who would that be? Uh, yeah, Reed. I'm Reed. sorry. I'm sorry. You think they're going to cancel? Yeah, uh, yeah Jeff. Uh, Jeff. Jeff apologizes. It wasn't Jeff. <laughs> yes. Yes, Vernon. I'll change the subject again just for Alan's benefit here. Thank you. Um, the, the, the filibuster, this is something I didn't know. The filibuster 
was never intended as a normal routine part of the Senate business. And as a matter of fact, according to the Federalist Papers, which the Republicans like to quote, Federalist number 58, the primary drafter was James Madison, defended the document against routine supermajority requirements, either for a quorum or for a decision. Yeah, if you, if you would have asked James Madison what 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 a filibuster was, he would have said, he would have said, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You know, there's chapter a, twenty. There's only a few things that are specifically require a supermajority yeah. in the mm -hmm. Constitution. One of them is impeachment, in order yeah. to remove a president, to remove a member from the body, either the Senate or the House requires a two thirds vote. Mm -hmm. It requires a two thirds vote to amend the Constitution. Okay, mm -hmm. but routine business was always supposed to be a majority rules. Yeah. And it was. Uh, it was it, until they the They would only have like three or four filibusters every legislative session. It wasn't, it wasn't until Mitch McConnell that they started doing no, it for everything. No. Well, they, they started abusing it is what it was. It was it actually became part of the Senate rules in 1806. And at that time, it was to protect slavery. Yeah, it was John C. Yeah. Calhoun who was the first one to start using it. And Calhoun was a, uh, he was a senator from, I think it was South Carolina. No, I think you're wrong. He was the uh, lawyer on Amos and Andy. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, yes, it's been there since 1806, but it wasn't used for every fucking bill. Mitch McConnell's the only one that made it all of a sudden have to be used for every fucking bill. Oh, by the way, you know who played Calhoun on Amos and Andy? No. It was the guy that played the voice of Br'er Rabbit uh -huh. in Song uh -huh. of the South. Bring it back full circle, I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I just thought I'd bring that way, up. The House used to have a filibuster, and they ended it in 1888. The House yeah. had a filibuster for all that time, and they got rid of it, and that hasn't killed the House. So let's get rid of it in the Senate, too. Yeah. yeah, but how do we get rid of it? You got to get a two-thirds two majority, right? No, 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 no. A simple majority. A simple yeah, majority. Could get rid of it. We'll get rid of it. Well, we've got a simple majority right now. Why don't we get yeah. rid of it? Except for because Manchin you got Manchin and Cinema. And cinema. They don't want to. They don't think that it should be abolished. You don't think maybe we could find a couple of them? A couple of Republicans might come over no, to our side. Not oh, in no. a million years. Nope. Republicans. Not in it. this environment. What I can't. Not one of them voted for the the the, the uh, new stimulus, and that had eighty three percent approval rate of the American populace. Oh. Eighty-three percent, and not a single Republican voted for it. You know, that's the part I don't understand. Don't they realize that if 83 percent of the American public was for that bill, that it's in their best interest to vote for no. it? Well, they 75 percent. They don't 75 care. 75 percent of the American voting public want to have reasonable gun control. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But Boy, the NRA. But the NRA keeps these Republicans with mm -hmm. donations and such, keeps the Republicans scared to death. Alan, yep. you've got your mic off, but you're talking. What's he? I guess maybe he's on a call or something. Yes, Jeff. I think it's not just what these senators have to say. Mm -hmm. It's often what they can can affect them bringing in money for the uh, when when they're going to be be re uh, reelected. Well, I just think it's ridiculous that you know that the Republicans have this attitude that if the Democrats want something then you vote against it automatically, no matter what, no matter yeah, what it is. Right. Well, I, I don't... I, I mean, you could you could vote on Taco Tuesdays, you know, <laughs> and, and they would vote against it if the Democrats wanted Taco Tuesdays. Right, yeah. yeah. I don't think there and is... And in fairness, vice versa, too, mostly. But. Yeah. Well, just look I, at I the Affordable think... Care Act. They're, the Republicans didn't support the Affordable Care Act, and it was a... Uh, that the entire legislation was based on Romney care in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I don't even think the Republican Party is a political party anymore. It's a it's a fucking Trump cult, you know? Yeah, look, at this look, point, look, it is. Yeah, and look, Trump's even saying, look, you can't use my name or my face in your advertising. Any any money, any any money that's going to be raised is going through me. You know, <laughs> that's how he is. He's it's his legal money. defense fund. 
his well, legal I, defense I, fund. I he's think, building it up. You know, but yes, and I think he wants to use the money for personal reasons, not yeah. for you know. It's the only. It's the only. Let's face it. None of his businesses are making money. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. Right. Yeah. What's with the a, Alan? He's talking to somebody, but he's not he's, talking to us. I have a Phil. Trump's huh? about to have a shitstorm of legal fees too. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. He's. I hope that fucker goes to jail so bad. And I, I, yeah. Well, Georgia, I, I would just prefer just, he go away and not no, bother us that. anymore. The only way yeah. he's going to go away he's is got to go to jail, jail though. Yeah. Hmm. He's got to be locked up because we can't have this yeah, guy yeah. be free as president for this country. He's gonna he's gonna match his orange jumpsuit pretty nice though. Yeah. yeah. It'll be orange is the new orange. Orange and orange. <laughs> orange new is size. the new orange. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I just you know, it just every everything is has gotten to the point where it just really gets to me now. You know? And uh I'm I'm just tired of just everything everything's going on. Nobody is civil, nobody is 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 being decent to each other i mean it's it's uh, incivility that goes on yes vernon i don't know if i told you guys or not but my car got stolen. Your mic on, uh, Alan. what my car got wait, stolen what wait what what did you say really the whole car turn yeah. your mic on alan no only part hey, of the no car. he's got his mic on now yeah what what did you say uh, alan no somebody he said his car got stolen and somebody said the whole car, and I said, no, only part of the car. <laughs> well, Wait no, minute, but what I want, the so, part of the story I wanted to relate was I was working on Sunday yeah. at home at Home Depot, and during my lunch break, I get this phone call from a five one three area code, which is Cincinnati, Ohio, and I didn't recognize yeah. it, so I didn't answer it. Well, as soon as it went to voicemail, it immediately rang again, and I didn't answer it the second time. So immediately it rang the third time. So I answered it, and it was a police officer on his cell phone. He had found my car, and really? he was calling me to tell me that wow. he found my car. And he said, "Do you want to come and get it now, or should I have it towed to the impound lot?" And I said, "Well, will there be any fees if, if it's towed? Because I'm at work right now." And he said, "No, since you were a victim, there would be no fees." Hmm. Okay. So, so I went and got yeah. it on Monday. I went and got it on Monday. But now I gotta have it fumigated because whoever stole it smoked about twenty packs of cigarettes inside. <laughs> and, and, and that's not all they smoked in there. Well, how many was, hours? At, how many hours was it gone? It was gone for seventeen days. Oh, oh man! And you, I and it was gone when you were at lunch. Tell you the car was gone. Hmm. I knew the car was gone oh, the day, okay. the morning that it was that it was stolen. What, what, it was uh, it, was it, anything it, else it, done to it besides the cigarette oh, smoke? They they stole they stole my tools out of the trunk that I used to to work with Habitat, but you know, uh, somebody said well it was probably a drug run, and I believe that now because I always reset the trip odometer when I fill it up with gas, and I had done that before the snowstorm hit that mm -hmm. happened. They stole it right after the six inches of snow fell, and I had a car cover on it, mm -hmm. and they lifted that six inches of snow off with the car cover and left the car cover and drove off. And it had 975 miles on it when I picked it up at Impound. Wow. Hmm. Did they arrest anybody? Jeez. Not yet. Uh, they probably there won't. Is, I mean, there, you... there is a detective on the case has been assigned to the case, but I've called him twice and he's never called me back. They're not going to find out. Who yeah. You'd just be glad you got the car back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'll, give you, I'll give you all the glad. Be, be glad the guy who stole it's going to get lung cancer. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, Alan. Uh, I'll give you all a warning. If you ever have your car stolen and it gets recovered, do not let the police take fingerprints from the inside. They use a uh, fine powder. It's graphite to, to get fingerprints off of stuff. And that powder will blow on you for seven years. You know, whenever you turn the air conditioner on to the heat, don't, you know, they'll, they'll say, can we take fingerprints? Nope. Let them take the fingerprints off the outside. They'll end up with everybody's including their own probably but well inside not only, is a mess not only am i going to get the car cleaned inside and out i'm going to change the locks that's 800 bucks right there well your insurance because, cover that, right well it'll cover the minus the deductible it will but 
they had it, they, they figured out a way to get a key for that car because they did not jimmy the ignition. So you still have your keys for it. I do. What type of car is it? It's a Honda Civic. So they, the, the people that go around steal cars, they don't have the actual key. They have no, they use a Jim or something. Don't they? They have, well, that, that, that's one way, but that doesn't start the car. But they have a, 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 a bunch of keys to haunt different Hondas, and they keep All sticking right. them in the door until they get the, the one that's close enough and jiggle it around. Is it an electronic the, situation? And the, police, the police call them jigglers. As people jiggle it, oh, that doesn't work. We'll try the next one. And sometimes, you know, Honda can only have so many, and it'll be close, and they'll steal the car. So, so there are only a certain number of keys for a particular Honda made. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think that, you know, if you get a key that's real close, a cut that's close, you know. Yeah, but I mean, if you go to get a key for your car. Yeah. I think they look at the key you have and it's got a number on it and they simply match it to that number. Sure. Yeah, mine mine has a chip in the key. And that chip has to match the electronic detector in oh, the wow. dash. And they got past that. Wow. Yeah, they got past that. Wow. Somehow. Wow. Yes, uh, Brian. I'd like to change the subject. So, um uh Brendan, <laughs> are, how are they are they doing breaks at uh, Home Depot right now? Like so like our break times and our work we have all the break room is closed. We can get coffee and get your food and you cannot eat in there at all. You have to take breaks in their cards. We can take breaks in there, but at one time, you know, they had tables where four people could sit at a table. Now you can only have one person sitting at a table at a time and the tables are, are more than six feet apart. Do they have plastic in between people? The, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, what do you do at your place? You just don't you don't let them use the break room, or or do, can they go into the break room to buy what they want to buy and then get the hell out of there? Yeah, exactly. So they they do have this outside area, and it's stupid, right? It's like the outdoor dining where it's sort of like a tent, mm -hmm. and they have only one table, two people with the plastic. Like you're visiting your friend in jail. Can't people <laughs> eat? I always, I always go up to the plastic when people are there and put my hand up there. Can't people? We'll get you out. We'll get your bail money. Can't people really make people go outside if they want to smoke? Can't people eat at their yeah. desks? Uh, well, well, you have all the manufacturing people who work on the lines, so you have to get way up like five hundred. Uh, yeah. Are the bathrooms open, open, Brian? <clears throat> what was that? Are the bathrooms open? Yep. Hmm. <laughs> wow. So, my, as sarcastic. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, we're we're doing the labels tonight. I forgot to make mine up. Oh, <laughs> I didn't. I, 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 my labels. I think Charlie had I, the best looking labels last week. Charlie had the best labels because he had a good font. Yeah, well, I I didn't get trained by you. You were before. font impaired. <laughs> I am. I'm, I'm font impaired. Well, <laughs> use. Uh, I'll tell you what you use. Uh, you, you go to get font. I think uh, Helvetica works pretty well, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. This one is and, good. That's a good font. Yeah, well, that's, that's a good font. Uh, that's that's a, nice. Which font is that? Well, yeah, which font? I don't know. Which font the is that? Default font. That could be Futura. It could be. Good. Mine was Calibri. Calibri. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Calibri. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, on the the next round, I will. Uh, pr I'll, I'll get your uh, input, Alex. Oh, okay, that's fine. It's In the meantime, you have to suffer. I mean, these are actually laminated. Oh wow, you really you really were yeah. serious. Well, you? I I happen to have a laminator. <laughs> you I, you have know, a laminator, we, use it. You know. Well, we use it. I mean, you know, you, yeah. well, you know, there's the six different types of marijuana and a couple different types of uh, methamphetamine, and you don't want the menus disappearing, so you just laminate them. What? Wait a minute. I don't get what you just said. Complete BS. Another, Complete another, BS. Yeah. Well, another sarcastic comment. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's another a reason. Laminator in any case. That's another reason I want to get my car clean because I don't know what kind of residue might be all over yeah, the seats. Yeah, who knew? Yeah, they were, they were partying in there probably. Probably, <laughs> probably doing horrible things like smoking yeah. marijuana. It, well, it, you know, you would he would have smelled the pot if it were in there. You know what pot smells like. I don't know. Cigarettes don't, are pretty take powerful. A black light to okay, it. wait a minute. Jeffrey has his hand up, and then Lar John Larkin. Yeah, I have one more uh, car thing, and that is my car was not stolen, but 
the exhaust was stolen. Oh, oh my next yeah. door neighbor. My next door neighbor had his catalytic converter cut off That's his car. That's what it is. They're the next, the next night, the mm. next night after my car was stolen, his catalytic converter was stolen. They're very they expensive, go. aren't they? You might be going very. To them. They have rare metals in them, so they, they steal them. Yeah, they're worth yeah. a lot. It's like two thousand dollars to repair them. Wow. Wow. I'm, the move. Oh, God, I'm, I'm glad I don't own a car because I don't have That's to right. go through any of this. <laughs> hey, Vernon, where are you located? You're, are you close to Cincinnati? No, I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, okay. So. That's close to Cincinnati. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. close to Cincinnati. About two hours. It's about two hours. About two hours. Yeah. Right. It's about two hours. About yeah. two hours. Yeah. right. Um, and, and tell them who your, who your, who your senators are. Oh, God. Mitch McConnell and Rand Paul. Ooh, oh, yeah, man, that's. That... <laughs> I'm sorry for you. <sighs> that's a oh, that's guy. a defecta. It, it, it were, that's oh, right. Jesus, and horrible. Well, Rand Paul's up for re-election in 2022. So, yeah, do you think he'll get re-elected? Eh, probably. Yeah, probably. He yeah. he came in. Probably. He came. Yeah, and uh, good old Rand... boys love Rand Paul. Rand, Rand Paul came in with the Tea Party crowd in 2010. Yeah. Yeah. Is, are they around anymore? No. What well, happened to them? They, 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 they were the flavor, of, they were the flavor of the Trump year, Trump. right? They became Trumpers. Yeah. They, yeah. Be, it, they became Trumpers. Right. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. They're the old Dixiecrats. They became the Tea Party. And the... So did anybody uh, see this thing on the internet? Uh the you know you know the Milwaukee Bucks, you know you know how at the, the, those NBA things where they have the uh, the kiss screen the kiss cam you know mm -hmm. oh, they, yeah. people up there and you got to kiss mm -hmm. well, well the uh, the Mock Milwaukee Bucks did a uh, the hand hand sanitizers uh, screen oh, and, and, yes and, yes <laughs> <laughs> they had that uh, they had that they had that on John Oliver's show yeah. this week and uh, they kept yeah. spritzing him with uh, with the hand sanitizer. It looked very. But, but uh, they had the yeah. they had this cam, and then they would spritz the yeah. lotion on people. Yeah, and it didn't look like lotion. It, it looked, looked like, like it, somebody referred to it as the jizz cam. Yeah, I yeah. Think. <laughs> I heard that they sprayed it in Vernon's car. <laughs> uh, they it couldn't they, smell any worse. They got rid of that in one night. So it's just like did you hear what uh, Amazon did? They. Uh, they created this new logo of a box with a piece of tape, but the tape looked like Hitler's mustache. So they, they got rid of that really quick. Mustache, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I'm huh. telling you, I, I uh, you know, um, I'm so happy that I have my second shot and that Me all too. the people I know who have had their second shot, I'm thinking of just holding a party here. Inviting people over just so we can all be together in the same yeah. place. You and and Pam could come down, Jeff. You know, well, Pam. She just I'll got her first one. She just got her first okay. one. Okay, she was. Well, we're not going to do it tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow night, I get my second party you at Alex's house. Yeah. All yeah, right. No, um, no, but Friday then. Probably. No, but but you could. You I know, thought we were going there for Thanksgiving, Alex. Yeah, you can come for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Sure. Okay, we're. You know, do I bring a covered dish? A, a, a trucker <laughs> Steve, drive your truck past our place, stop, have dinner, and go Pick on your merry way. Take the you know. train. I have to take the train. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Trucker Steve hasn't had his shots yet. Oh. I'm getting to feel like a Labrador retriever. I've had my shots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just temper. <laughs> yeah. But but uh, Jeff's had his, and uh, um, I had mine. I had my distemper shots. You know, do you have both of your shots so far? Yeah. Okay. And uh, Vernon's about to have his second shot soon. No, I've had my second one. Oh, you've had the second one? Yeah. Okay. So we can all hang out. See, I mean, the thing right. is that they, the CDC has now said that if you've been had both shots, you can hang out with other people who've had <laughs> both shots. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, that, that kind of makes me feel good. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. My friend Shecky has had both shots, and I haven't seen Shecky in a year, and I would like to see yeah. Shecky. So I was thinking, get out on the get on the subway as I always did, and go out to see Shecky. There's just one little problem Marjorie brought up today. The she subway. heard from friends. 
Well, no, the subway, it, it could even have people with COVID on there. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm protected. I'm going to have the mask and I'm protected. Yeah, right. All right. Okay. But they say that there are a lot of muggings. Oh. <laughs> and there are a lot of terrible people in the subways now. It's and it's back. kind of a dangerous wow. thing to take a subway. So Marjorie wow. said, if I were you, I wouldn't do it. What, I got to wait another year to see Shecky? I'll, I'll, I'll send you, Alex, I'll send you a hat like the one I'm wearing. Right. Uh, uh, just it, take a car out there, Alex. You can afford it. Yeah, really. With yeah. all your money. Yeah. Right. I don't know how much yeah. it would cost me to get out there. Probably a Take lot. Take an Uber. Huh? Yeah, an Uber. It'll <laughs> cost me a hundred bucks each way. You know. I don't know how far he lives. A hundred bucks. I don't know. How much are Ubers? Get to Jeff's house in an Uber for a hundred. Well, we're talking about Shecky lives out in Queens. Hmm. Uh, he doesn't lift car. Huh? Lift cars are like eight bucks an hour. Well, somebody said that the guy that stole my car just couldn't afford Uber. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of those southern jokes yeah. but uh, uh, the, the thing is the subways are supposedly you know as, as somebody said they took the subways recently and there are just a lot of terrible people down there okay. you know so you know I just, it, if it isn't one thing it's another I just want life to get back to some kind of semblance of normal Oh, absolutely. You know, I'm so sick of it. How about this. if you get a cop to go with you? Uh, yeah, that's good. Come uh, come vis visit me, Alan. No problem. <laughs> you know. Uh the thing is that I um uh you know that uh, you know that I'm just uh uh I don't know, I'm just tired all the time and everything and walking, I walk down to the the supermarket and I come back and I'm I'm tired. You know? I just so been indoors for like so long that I haven't been able to do anything with this body and it's starting to atrophy. So I don't know. Take, you know, take walks. That's why I get on. Yeah. Time. Once the weather changes today, it was really nice. Yeah. That's why I went out. But it, most of the time it's been like in the, it's been in the thirties and twenties and yeah, I'm not, I don't want to walk in there. It's getting back into walking season. Yes, yeah. folks. I'm lazy. Okay. I am too. You know, I'm right there with you. Well, Some people call you, that you know, critique. And you know, I'm also a year older than when this than whole Dan? thing started, huh? You're a year older than Dan. Yes. No, I'm a year older than oh, I was man. when the COVID thing started. Yep, we all are. So, you know, all the things I was doing, and, and I've had some, you know, work done on me, like the prostate the stuff and all that. So, you know, all of that adds up, and you just kind of kind of tired. And, you say goodbye. You know, oh, right. wait a minute. Hold on uh -oh. a second. Uh oh. Uh oh. There uh -oh. we go. Uh oh. Uh -oh. It's there we go. Late. Hi. How Here's are you tonight, Adrian? Here's our mascot. Good. Hello. All of a sudden, she. Why is it she say she doesn't she isn't shy when she first hits the camera, and yeah. then she gets shy. Is and she sees herself, I think, on the camera. <laughs> on the oh. See that lovely girl on the camera? <laughs> huh? Isn't she pretty? <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's really pretty. Why are you going to have a lot of work to do when she gets to be in her <laughs> teens? Get when yourself. She a... takes, when she's 40, I'll be okay with it. Uh, yeah, but get yourself Happy. a baseball bat. I think you're going to need it, you know? <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, let's see here. I think it's, I think it's time to go been nice yeah, been nice so. to having all you guys here and uh, you know we'll do it again tomorrow night if you want to uh trucker steve good to have you here yeah. always nice to see you and your dog rocky yep uh and uh, is rocky there at all no i guess not oh th th there he is see see there's doggy doggy okay <laughs> uh and, uh and and thank you very much brian and thank you very much adrian God, she gets prettier every time we see her. Uh, Charlie Wallace, thank you. Thank you, John Larkin. Thank you to Jeffrey Stein. Thank you to Dan Meyer. Vernon, always a pleasure to have you here. And Alan, always great to have you here. And I would like you all to kind of give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye back. How's that? Okay, there we go. Ah, that's our citizen panel for tonight as they go off into the sunset, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's more coming right up with Jack Bishop, and he's got the intersection. He'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. 
Uh, I will be back again tomorrow night uh, right after the uh, sports show. Or, Well, the sports show is on first, and then I come on at 10.30 Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Daylight starts next week. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And, by the way, be safe out there. And wear a mask. Good night, everybody. Have a nice night.